Welcome to Conversations with the Candidates. I'm Thor Jurgensen, City Editor of The Daily Item. Our guest today is Timothy Phelan, uh, who is running for City Councilor at Large. He's a former City Councilor at Large. Uh, welcome, Tim. Good to see you. Thank you, Thor. Thanks for having me. You're it's welcome. Gr it's great to be in the new building. Very welcome. Thank you. Tell us about yourself, your background, of course, a little while why you are running for office again. Sure. Um, well, I'm born and raised in the city of Lynn. Uh, I've lived here my uh, entire life. Uh, the, I grew up uh, on Kings Beach Road, uh, went to uh, Brickett Elementary School, uh, to Easton Junior High School, which is now Marshall Middle School, and Lynn English High School. Graduated from Lynn English. Uh, I went on to college and law school. Uh, my eight brothers and sisters graduated from Lynn English. We have a strong tradition over there, as did my father and grandfather when Lynn English was at another location. Um, after that, I, uh, I've worked at Neighborhood Legal Services in the city of Lynn, providing legal assistance for people that can't afford private attorneys. I've been a prosecutor in the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office. I've uh, been a substitute school teacher in the Lynn school system, a tutor at North Shore Community College. Uh, I'm a member of uh, a, a, a member of a wide range of uh, different civic and volunteer organizations over the years, such as uh, being Lynn Youth Soccer. I've been a coach and on the board there for years. Uh, St. Pius CYO Basketball, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Friends of Lynn Woods, Friends of Lynn Nahant Beach, Kylie Park Association. Uh, you know, I feel a, uh, I, I, I enjoy being involved in the community. Uh, I, I've been an uh, active fundraiser for Catholic charities. Uh, you know, there have been many things that, um, that it's not, I don't consider it work for me. It's something that I enjoy doing. Uh, I have uh, two children uh, that are uh, now both in college uh, and uh, married to my wife, Stacy, who was uh, a teacher in the Lynn School System, assistant principal for about 15 years. Um, and, uh, and I was on the school, Lynn School Committee for four years and the Lynn City Council for 18 years and was the president of the city council for about eight years. So that's kind of my background. I have eight brothers and sisters. A lot still live in the city of Lynn with their families. And, uh, and you know, and I'm running for council at large again because I really have the passion and the energy and I think some pretty good ideas to continue to move our city forward. Tim, what would you point to as accomplishments of, in your personal life and professional, but also in the civic arena? You're, Sure. Your service on the school committee and city city council. In my personal life, um, uh, I'm very I'm a, a a old school traditional family kind of guy, uh, you know. And I just go right to my family. I have uh, two wonderful children uh, who are, are fortunately really good kids. Uh, you know, my wife has been very supportive of me, which has been challenging over the years. Uh, you know, when somebody is involved in politics, the ups and downs of the political arena. Uh, but she's always, you know, stood by my side, thick or thin. And, you know, and, and sometimes things go better than other times, and sometimes you get knocked down. But I've always believed that, you know, you, um, you know, you, if you get knocked down, you've got to get back up on your feet, and that's what I'm doing this time. But she's always been there. So I feel very uh, fortunate to have a very close family. Uh, my siblings were all very close. Uh, their families are all very close. So. Um, I know it's it's not glamorous, but you know that's important to me, and uh, I think I got it from my parents uh, the importance of uh, you know a close family unit, and I hope I pass it on to my kids. So I'd look at that as a personal accomplishment, uh, you know, for them putting up with me you know, all over these years. But uh, as an elected official, you know, I, I have been elected official for a long time, and you know, and I don't think anybody as an elected official can individually take credit for, uh, for anything that, that occurs in the city of Lynn or any city because they have to work with other people. You know, if you need something passed on the council, you need six votes. Uh, you know, you have to work with the mayor's office or the state delegation. You know, and I think when I was in there, I was capable of doing that without compromising my principles. And, but some of the things that I have uh, that I think are very important, um, I'm the one that initiated and created the Lynn Disability Commission in the city of Lynn. I think the Lynn item just did a very good article uh, about the new path that they created up Lynn Woods um, because of the voice that uh, the Disability Commission has given people with disabilities. Uh, and we had some great volunteer work and donations by the Menino Construction Company. 
Uh, you know, when I first started, you know, I rewrote the discipline code and the, um, the school discipline code and dress code when I was on the school committee. Uh, ins I instituted at the time what I thought was very, very uh, important was something called the Hartwood Institute Ethics Curriculum Pilot Program. And what that is is, is a, a program that through um, literature at the elementary school level, through award-winning books, um, it teaches conflict resolution without violence through reading. And, you know, because I think that really, uh, if you want to reduce crime in the city of Lynn, uh, the initial reaction is we need more police on the street, which is good. Uh, but if you want it to be sustainable, you have to do something that is really long-lasting. And I think trying to teach kids at a young age uh, is a good start to do that. Um, when I was uh, on the city council, if you recall years ago, uh, we have a, a, a teen smoking ban in the city of Lynn. Um, I created ordinance that prohibits strip clubs from coming in the city of Lynn. Uh, I created the dental clinic in downtown, a free dental clinic uh, for um, elderly and people that can't afford to go to a dentist themselves. Um, if you re years ago, the um, uh, entity was trying to uh, locate a, a, a actually teen jail, a jail for teenage people for felons, convicted felons in downtown Lynn, uh, which I vigorously fought against and was successful about that. And I irritated a lot of uh, you know politicians and power brokers behind the scene, but I didn't care. If that ever came in the city of Lynn, the downtown wouldn't be where it is right now in what we've tried to accomplish, which has taken a long period of time. Um, I'm very proud of the work that I did in the creation of the VNA building, um, negotiating the special permit, the, the uh, requirements that we put on the VNA building. When that plan was initially proposed, it was two-story. It, uh, it was supposed to take the entire lot of land. Uh, there was no green space involved. There was a parking lot on site. Uh, the things that I negotiated and held a hard line on was to reduce the footprint of the building, make it go up higher. It, it, it hid the ugly parking garage and it, it had a beautiful green space and they've done a wonderful job there. We also uh, mandated in there that they, they have no parking on site because the parking garage is about 20 feet away. They used a parking garage. So there were a lot of things like that and look at it today. It's, it's a beautiful you know, anchor of uh, that area of the city of Lynn. Uh, when I was uh, president of the council, things such as the building of the new police station, the building of Manning Field, uh, you know, the power lines were moved off the waterfront. Uh, you know, there are, um, you know, uh, this, I wasn't, when I was on the council, the city hall auditorium, the, uh, you know, we, you know, approved the funding and the idea behind that when it was coming through the community development uh, at the time. So uh, the downtown, we went from, uh, remember back in the early, you know, 90s or the mid 90s, it was the wild, wild west. You know, there were more, you know, fights and barroom brawls and shootings in downtown. And over time, we allowed residential by right, um, embraced the arts and cultural district, and with some great leadership and home ownership, um, condos downtown. It, it's at a point where it's really moving forward, and we can continue to move forward there. So. I mean, there are. I mean, I. I'm not afraid to fight against, uh, fight for things that I believe in, even if they're controversial. Uh, you know, things like uh, the ordinance against pit bulls, the pit bull muzzle ordinance, or the level three sex offenders, uh, where I took a strong stand on that. The homeowners' bill of rights, which was in place for about two and a half, three years, overturned by the court. But in that time period, 61 families, 61 families. Um, were not foreclosed upon their houses. Banks didn't lose any money, but they're still homeowners today because of that ordinance. So it was successful in a degree, and I'm not afraid to do that. I'm not afraid to speak up, you know, what, what I think, what I believe in. And I know I'm rambling a little bit, but, uh, you know, I'm very passionate uh, about uh, doing what I do. And, and I love being on the city council. I love representing the people of the city of Lynn. I love the city of Lynn. I appreciate that. What is the biggest issue facing the city of Lynn, Tim? Sure. I don't know if you can identify one individual issue uh, uh, because there are, there are so many that are intertwined, but to me, uh, it's Union Hospital, uh, saving Union Hospital from uh, uh, the closure that's anticipated. Uh, and that's something that uh, I'm passionate about, uh, and I really, it's one of the things that I'm going to bring to the forefront uh, if I'm on the council. Uh, I think we have to take more initiative. The Partners Healthcare. Uh, has indicated that they've lost $25 million over a period of time, uh, and that's why they have to close the hospital. But what they didn't tell you 
is they systematically reduced services uh, the, the two or three years before they passed out that fiscal report. You know, cardiac care, um, respiratory services, outpatient physical therapy services, and they're eliminating all these services and then at the same time saying we're not making any money up here. Um, it was definitely pre-panned. It's, it's, it's all about money, it's not about health care. Anybody that um, has ever driven down Highland Avenue during rush hour, uh, you know, you can't get down there. You know, if somebody's having a heart attack, those two or three minutes count. The people up on that part of the city, the seniors, you know, it, and you're, you're talking not only affecting the people of the city of Lynn, you're affecting people in, you know, neighboring communities as well, Saugus and, and that part of Peabody and Linfield where I feel that partners is putting money ahead of, of, of human lives and I think that that's wrong. Uh, the city of Lynn will be the largest city in the state of Massachusetts without a full care, um, full, a full service hospital. We need an emergency room, you know, we need a full service hospital. I think that the city should actually file a lawsuit themselves to get involved in the process called impleading into the process, uh, take some initiative. You know, I, what frustrates me is when people say, well, you know, you, you can't do that. They, everyone is giving you reasons why you can't do something. And I, my philosophy is don't tell me why we can't do it, tell me how we can do it. And, and I've never been afraid to push that envelope and I, and, and I want to push that envelope because I think this issue is important to everybody in the city of Lynn. You mentioned uh, the city filing a lawsuit or, propo or you're proposing the mm -hmm. city file a lawsuit and join the fight to keep Union Hospital. Um, as a counselor, uh, what would be involved and what would your role in that process be uh, and what else can the council actually do at all to sure. ultimately keep Union in Lynn? Sure. The, that's the challenge. Uh, because these are state regulatory processes that, you know, determination of needs, what has to happen with the Department of Public Health. However, the law department uh, technically works and represents the Lynn City Council. Uh, and if the council votes to have the law department um, initiate some type of action or come up with a legal theory, what my thought process is, the more impediments that you put in front of somebody trying to do something like this and slows them down, it's gonna cost them more money and it's gonna delay the implementation or prevent the implementation. Uh, you know, we, the only thing I ever hear is, oh, well, you know, which is nice. I met with the Attorney General. Oh, the, I mean, we met with the Attorney General at meetings. I see nice letters that people are writing uh, in support of keeping Union Hospital open and that's great. You know, petitions, that's great. You know, we can see the passion behind that. However, substantively, that really doesn't accomplish anything. And, and I think that we as a city should take the forefront and do something different and do something substantively and I think initiating some type of lawsuit is a good way to start that. This is a question that you've had to answer for decades. Why should someone vote for you? Why should somebody vote for me? I, I love the city of Lynn. I, uh, I'm not leaving the city of Lynn, I've been here. Uh, I think I have creative ideas for the city of Lynn. Uh, I'm, I'm not affiliated with any political group or organization, I've always remained independent. Uh, there are a lot of elected officials all across the country that will sit on the fence and are afraid to make a decision. And with me, I'm not afraid to make a decision. You'll, you may agree or disagree with me, but you'll always know where I stand. And I think those are the type of elected officials that people are looking for today, for that type of leadership to take initiative. I'm not gonna go and occupy a seat. I have the passion, I have the energy, and I have the love for the city of Lynn. I, 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 I you know, I've never, when I've been on the council, been a passive member of the council. I've always tried to lead, I've tried to assert, I listen to people, uh, I hear their concerns. Uh, and I represent them. It, to me, it's an, if, if, I'm fortunate enough, if, if I'm fortunate enough to get on, it's an honor to serve on the city council, and I've always looked at it that way, and I, hopefully I'll be able to do it again. This has been a conversation with city council at large candidate Timothy Phelan. I'm Thor Jurgensen, city editor of The Daily Item. For more election coverage, read The Daily Item and itemlive.com. Thank you, Tim. Thor, thank you very much for having me. You, Appreciate my it. My pleasure.